What time is it now, Alice? It's uh, nearly half past ten. Maybe he lost a sheep or something. He could have stopped off at McNeil's. No. No, he wouldn't do that, Alice. No, I don't know that. Well, even if he'd hurt himself but could still manage to walk, he'd have come home. Never been as late as this before. Well, we can't just sit here doing nothing. If something has happened to him, we should be doing something about it. But what, Alice? What can we do? He could be anywhere. Oh, I've seen this happen before. Look, I'll take the Land Rover and go up to the cottage and get Bob. Well, the two of us can go out and look for him. In the dark? Well, at least Bob might have some idea of what to do. I'll get my jacket. Look, uh, I'll get back as quickly as I can. Can you drive that Land Rover? No, oh, I'll manage. Look, it'll be all right. I'm sure. Stubble. He's still not back. It's nearly 11, Bob, and not a sign of him. Well, something must have happened. Mrs. Lachlan's worried sick. Well, just calm down. Anything could have happened. There could be 101 reasons for him being late. But he's more than late, Bob, and you know he is. Look, we'll have to go out and look for him. It's pitch dark out there. We, we wouldn't know where to begin to look for him. Bob. No, Alice. At best, we could stumble about these hills for hours and never find him. At worst, we could get lost ourselves. In winter, these hills can be killers. And Dougal's out there, somewhere. We must do something. All right, look, you take the Land Rover and go back down to the croft. What are you going to do? I'm going to drive down to the phone box at the foot of the glen, and I'm going to raise the alarm. Come on. Bob. Something has happened to Dougal, hasn't it? I just hope not. Come on. Glendalough House. Who? Bob? Look, what on earth are you phoning at this time of night for? There's nobody here. Ah, well, of course I'm here. Look, I'm just checking things before I go to my bed. What? What? Look, hang on, Bob, and I'll get Mrs. Cunningham. Oh, 
Mrs. Cunningham, it's Archie. I'm downstairs in the office. Look, I've got Bob Taylor on the line. It seems we might have an emergency on our hands. What's keeping Bob? He's been away for ages. I'll make some tea. I'll do it. No, you're not. I'm quite capable of making some tea myself. Excuse me. Sure, I've taken him this long to get down to the telephone box and back. I'm sure he'll be as quick as he can. I don't know how you can take it all so calmly. My Dougal, Dougal could be in real trouble. Tears and fretting will not bring him back. You're talking almost as though you thought he was dead. Mrs. Ralphling, what did you mean earlier when you said you'd seen it all happen before? Oh, it was a long time ago, lass. Oh, what? What was a long time ago? Oh, I was just a child, about seven or eight, I think. The sort of age when you're old enough to understand what's going on, but not old enough to be really involved, except as an onlooker. Oh, I remember he was a bonny man, Jamie Cameron. A big, strong crofter. He used to sit me on his knee and tell me stories when he and my father would come in for a wee dram after the dipping. It was just about this time of the year, too. The night he didn't come back down from the hills. What happened? It was a Friday. I remember that because a Friday night was always bath night in our house. A great big galvanised tub set in the middle of the kitchen floor, filled with kettles full of water from the stove. Mrs Cameron arrived at the door. Three miles she'd come on her own across the glen in the dark. Jamie hadn't come home, she said. She was nearly hysterical. Mrs. Larkin, I, I don't well, think... It was more than two hours before my father got the rest of the crofters together and they set out to look for him. And it was after one in the morning when they gave up and came back two by two, cold and depressed. My mother gave them soup. What had happened to him? They went out at first light, and they found him soon enough. He was up on the edge of the eastern forest. He'd got caught in some poacher's trap. Crushed his ankle. They say it's, that wasn't what killed him, though. It was the cold. They say it's just like going to sleep. never did get my bath that night. It's Bob. He's not back then. Oh, what's kept you so long? I got through to Mrs Cunningham. She phoned the police in Town and they said that under no circumstances were we to mount a search in the dark. What are we supposed to do then? Mrs Cunningham's been in touch with as many estate workers as she can. Everyone's to meet here first thing in the morning. Oh, we just sit here all night doing nothing. Mr Dunbar's on his way up here in the estate Land Rover. So if Dougal does turn up in the next hour or so, he can radio down and call off the search party. And if he doesn't? Then we begin the search at first light. At first light. What? Dougal? Well, when? And he hasn't shown up since. What is it, that? Yes, yes, of course he will. Uh, what time? Well, is there nothing we can do in the meantime? No. No, of course not. Right, Mrs. Cunningham. We'll be there. Goodbye. Trouble? It's Dougal Lachlan. Apparently he's gone missing up in the hills there, organizing a search party to look for him at first light. I'm sure he's going to be out there all night. Ah, it looks like it. 
I have said we'll be at the Croft first thing to join the search party. Some lad, it must be nearly freezing out there. Mm, it'd be a damn sight colder up at Advin. Thanks, Ken. Well, if you could meet up with Archie about, oh, say, 6.30? Uh, no, Archie's taking one of the Land Rovers and he'll have Melrose and MacDonald with him. Yes. Thanks again, Ken. Right, bye. No word. Oh, I don't expect there will be now. Well, if, if he had shown up, Bob would have driven down, phoned in. God, it would be a tragedy. So close to the wedding, too. Yes. Well, at least there's a sizable search party for the morning. I'm glad you're here. Right. I'd better take a map. What worries me is how Grace is taking it. She has a bad heart, doesn't she? Almost killed her last year. Have you contacted Dr. Wallace yet? He'll be up there first thing in the morning. It's going to be so difficult trying to find one man in those hills. It's a wild country up there. Have you any idea where we should start? I'll need to talk to Mrs. Lachlan. But it'll be pretty much of a lottery. I'd better get on up there. You can take me with you. Well, who'll look after the phones? I rang Lorna. She's going to stand by all night. So cold out there. If he's still alive now and he's out there all night, there's a strong chance he'll die of exposure. Thanks, Alice. Mrs. Larkin. So, Bob, he could have been working on the fencing up at Poacher's Drop. No, he couldn't do any more up there without me being able to give him a hand. Had he moved any sheep up onto the new march? Well, I'm not really sure. I know he had his sheep uh, up in the west grazing during most of the summer. But it would have made sense for him to take them to the east side after the allocation of the new land. Yes, more sheltered. Well, at this time of year, yes. Right. That's where we'll begin the search. It'll be light soon. The men should start arriving any minute now. All these hours just sitting here doing nothing. It should have been possible to have done something. Alice, it would have I been... I know, I know. Impossible in the dark. It's a crazy world, isn't it? We live in times when you can watch television pictures of men in the moon, pick up a phone and speak to someone else on the other side of the world, and yet we can't go out and help a man that's lost, probably only a few miles away, because it's dark. I'll make you some tea if you'd like, Mrs. Lachlan. Mrs. Lachlan? What's that, last? Tea? No. No, nothing. You must have something. You've not had anything all night. Won't you go to bed just for an hour or two, Grace? Could be a long time yet. You think I would sleep, Mrs. Cunningham? No, I don't suppose you would. But it's been a long night. I do think it might help even to lie down for a bit. No, I'll just sit here until they bring him in. Grace, you mustn't give up hope. The search party will be here very soon, and we'll get away just as soon as it's light enough. We'll find him. I have no doubt that you'll find him. Dougal is a strong, resourceful man, Mrs. Lachlan. He knows the land well. If anyone can survive out there, Dougal can. Jamie Cameron was a strong, resourceful man, and he knew these hills better than even Dougal. That's them arriving now. <clears throat> Mr. 
Don't give up, Mrs. Lachlan. We won't. Obviously hasn't shown up yet. Afraid not. We'll get the search underway in a few minutes. Mrs. Lachlan? She's inside, Doctor. I'll go and see her. with me, Doctor. Have you slept? I'm going to give you a couple of tablets, and I want you to take them I'm with not taking any tablets, and I don't want you here fussing about me. They'll be leaving any minute now. And when they find Dougal, I want you with them. I will be, Mrs. Lachlan. So if everyone's clear in the boundaries of the Eastern area, that's where we'll start. Now, I don't want anyone else getting lost, so we'll stay in pairs and within shouting distance of each other. Have you any points you want to make, Patrick? Yes, I have. Dougal didn't bring the sheep down last night, so they're still up there in the hills. Now, they'll have wandered a bit, of course, but they will be a guide to his general whereabouts. Are your dog, Mr. Dunbar? Yeah. Dougal had his dog with him, of course. Laddie. Uh, if Dougal is injured, it's very unlikely that Laddie will have left him, so that is very definitely something we must keep our eyes open for. Uh, what do we do if we find him? If he's hurt in any way, make no attempt to move him. Simply shout for help. Dr. Wallace will be with us, and nothing is to be done without his say-so. So, if there are no more questions, I suggest we move. We'll rendezvous at the Eastern Road End in, say, ten minutes, and we'll spread out from there. <coughs> To tell you the truth, Factor, I don't think there's much chance of finding him alive. I could take Mrs. Cunningham and yourself and the Land Rover, Doctor. Oh, I'd be fine, Robert. I think my car would make it up there. Yeah. Well, what about me? You better stay here, Alice. But I want to help. Bob's right, Alice. Grace can't be left here on her own. We've got plenty of searchers. It's probably the best way you can help. Yes. You'll bring him back alive, won't you? Send my way. Mrs. Lachlan. Are you all right, Mrs. Lachlan? Oh, no. What am I going to do, Alice? Without Dougal? What am I going to do? Uh, 
much to put up here about? Ten, twelve hours by now. Ah, oh, it's more like fourteen or fifteen. <sighs> And you could survive that. Well, if I had my thermal underwear on and a flask, maybe. <laughs> well, what do you think? I'm trying very hard not to. Hey, it's a... No. No, it's a sheep. Ah. <clears throat> How was Mrs. Lachlan? Wouldn't let me near her. She's convinced he's dead. Well, of course, she knows these hills. She's seen it happen before. Has it? I believe so. That's Laddie. And that's Poacher's Drop. Poacher's Drop! We've found the dog! Come on, Bob! There's a good dog, Laddie. There's a good dog. Where's Dougal, Laddie? Where's Dougal? Oh, God. It's all the things you think about after they've gone. The things you've left unsaid and things you've taken for granted. And then suddenly they're not there anymore. You can't tell them. Oh, I've seen too much of this in my life, Alice. Death is something you never get used to. We don't know that Dougal's dead. We don't know anything for certain yet. We found him, up by Poacher's Drop. He's alive. <laughs>